Welcome to the Circle Sessions featuring the Circle of Experts. The Circle of Experts are Yasmin Robles from Robles Designs, Tanisha English Amamu of TJE Communications, and Don the Idea Guy. I'm Brett Johnson from Circle 270 Media Podcast Consultants. Each week, one of the Circle of Experts joins me to talk about some critical aspects of growing your podcast, which can turn, can, you know, grow your business as well. We focus on marketing, social media, monetization, and website design to help you implement all of these together. This time around, Yasmin Robles from Robles Designs. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, we talk a lot about different aspects of building a website, maintaining a website, but you know, um, I don't think we've, well, we may have, but not specifically talked about budgeting, dollars. I mean, it, it, it's not free, really. I mean, <laughs> It is, but you know what? Even even though you may go to a, a free site that builds website, it's still not free because you're spending time on it yourself. So there yeah. is a there is either a time that you're giving to it, or you're paying somebody to do it. So you know why is it so important for businesses to budget effectively for their website? Yeah, so your website is really the first point of contact between your business and your potential customers, especially if you're a podcaster. It's not like you're a coffee shop with a barista. You, you really the website is the first point where they say, I heard about this, I want to find out more. And it's really essential if you have a digital a storefront as well. So what are some of the key costs associated with building? And then let's not forget about maintaining a website that business owners, podcasters should consider. Yeah, so there are several costs to consider when budgeting for a website. Firstly, you have the initial cost of the website design and development, which it can vary depending on the complexity of the site, the number of pages, any additional features or functionalities that you need. It can also depend on whether you're DIYing it, you have, you're, you're investing your time instead of your dollars, or if you're having, let's say, a freelancer do it or a boutique agency all the way to you know, a high-end agency that might charge hundreds, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So it really can, when it comes to that build out, it can vary widely. Um, then there are the costs such as the domain registration, the website hosting, security measures, and then regular updates and maintenance to the site. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't realize all the back end stuff. You say, oh, that's created. It's like, yeah, but you got to maintain it, <laughs> you know, yeah. and is it you touching it or someone, else, you know, the, the, mm -hmm. the paid partner to do it? So, yeah, so leading to that. So how do you effectively budget for these costs? Yeah, so one of the ways that you can budget for the website is to really break down the costs into different categories and prioritize them based on your business goals and budget constraints. So what I would do is start outlining the website requirements and really identify anything that's essential, like it's an essential feature or a functionality that must be met. Then research different vendors and service providers and get an idea of the typical costs associated with, with each of those. Um, it's also important to factor in potential future expenses, such as scaling up your website um, as your business grows. So all that to say is just write down, I would say just in plain, plain terms, write down everything like your wish list for your website, then filter that and write down what you must have in order to, for example, if you're launching, in order to launch what you must have and what you wanna have in a quarter, in two quarters, in a year, in three years, five years, and you being able to understand those features. So if in three years you want a membership site, it might not be important to invest the budget in starting it now because maybe your business isn't ready for that yet. You don't have the bandwidth for it, but you foresee that in two to three years you might. So you can put that in those buckets. Um, and this helps whether you're DIYing it or going to an agency. And the reason it helps is because as an agency owner, like I can, if we, if we sit down and talk, let's say we're eating tacos, we're, you know, we're, we're chatting about websites and you say my MVP or minimum viable product for my podcast website is to just really have an about page, a page, a homepage, a contact page, and one that has my blog posts, and that's where I'm going to embed my podcast. So that's really just four different items, right? You didn't say anything about having a chat bot or anything else like that on the site. So that now I can say, perfect. 
is all of this, since all of this is for launching, where do you want to be in the next couple of years? You can say, you know, I want a membership site or somewhere where people can pay a fee to listen to the podcast earlier. So now I can navigate the situation and give you the best price for that website instead of saying, oh yeah, totally, it's going to cost you all this amount of money when you don't really even need it in the beginning, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's gonna how it helps. If you're DIYing it, it helps because then you can go and like research Squarespace and WordPress and all those DIY places and see which one has the features that you need instead of having to pay somebody to install them after you've purchased that hosting. To me, it sounds as though you're talking about possibly working with like a website futurologist almost. That it, it, we, yeah, well, you know, but we talked about this a few episodes ago about in regards to what AI will be doing, can be doing. So it's that I would want to work with somebody that at least, okay, they understand the reality of today. This is what, you, like you said, the MVP. Mm -hmm. This is what I have to have it do. But, but it's also good to know that, you know, and you, you bring it up in, in this discovery session, like, okay, this, and then it goes to this thing. Have you ever thought about maybe in a few years that it goes here? Would this be? possible at least it's on the board uh, mm -hmm. working with a professional like you or you know, a, a futurologist you know that it's that i can see the future and then you could possibly do this think about it we're not going to do this today but let's prep today so in three years you're ready i could just do a plug in you're ready to roll i think that's huge and in, in that yeah. discovery st uh, phase of what you want to do with this mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah, I will say that it also helps you not overspend. So I, I know we I we bootstrap this business, right? It's it's expensive to start a business. It's not just even websites. It could be you have to purchase the name of the business. And if you're podcasting, are you going to be doing some kind of marketing or sponsorships with other organizations? And um, it can get pretty pricey. So you want to just understand what what you need right now. And you really want to understand where you want to be in five years or even a year from now, because let's say, for example, we build you a very simple site, one of our lowest tier packages, it's, it'll be done in a week. Um, and we build you a site on something like Squarespace a year from now, you say, Oh my gosh, I've grown so much. And now I can really take my, my company and start that full membership with a forum and everything um, on my site. Well, Squarespace might not be the, that platform for you. And if you're, as long as you are knowledgeable that for a year, you're gonna pay for Squarespace. And then with all of the other things you want, you probably have to move to another platform. Uh, if As long as you're knowledgeable about that, then it's fine. But if you were thinking that this one platform was going to grow with you, because we didn't know, we just built it on that, when nobody really talked about where you were gonna be in a year, now you're spending more money instead of just expanding you're actually rebuilding um which it can be fine it depends again it always depends i've known some startups that purposefully do it that way they want low maintenance the smallest tier level the smallest site to test their target market and then when they see that the business has potential they will then invest more dollars into a completely different website different platform and other folks don't don't have that budget. So it just really depends on your goals. But knowing where you want to be is crucial. So you've got the budget kind of put together. You know where you are. You know, okay, this is going to be my expense at least for the next couple of years, maybe year for a website. Um, would you suggest that maybe you need to review and reassess that? Or is, is it locked in? Uh, I would say so, yes. The answer is the short answer is yes. The long answer is it depends. <laughs> Yeah. on your situation yeah. so yes go ahead and reassess your website budget depending on what you're doing so if you are just launching your podcast you have a very simple mvp type of website your assessment is probably going to be closer to when the hosting renews right so if you're squarespace you launch in january it'll be around december i would say start to think about am i going to continue with squarespace am i paying and getting what i want from them um, then now you probably have a list of goals or something for the podcast. And if you've hit those goals, now is it time to push for a newer website or, or expanding the website? Are you going to be doing something that's more under the hood, like SEO or and, and content creation? Or are you going to be spending your dollars on other type of marketing, such as going to conferences and that sort of thing? So really, I guess it comes to assessing your 
business budget overall. I know we all hate our P&L and ha hate looking at those income statements. But then it, as a side note, making sure that within your marketing efforts, you are assessing your website, make sure that it's helping you. So I understand that as small business owners, we don't have the, sometimes the time, we're solopreneurs, we don't have the time to look at our analytics, make sure that it's at least connected. Um, make sure that you're tracking all of the marketing, all the effort that you're putting into this blood, sweat and tears that you're putting into pushing this business and this podcast to to really expand. And then even if it's at that end of the year or right before your your hosting is about to renew, take a look at those analytics and see what has been working. And then with that information, then you can now say, OK, so perhaps my website is getting traffic, but I didn't realize that it was my blog post that was bringing in traffic. Can I allocate dollars to content creation or push for more episodes or do something else within that website? Because that's something that's been working for me, even though I didn't necessarily push for it. And that might not be a website expansion, right? That might not be a fancy new forum or members membership area. It might just be hiring an agency or, or doing, doing it yourself um, and posting more podcasts or more um, content, more blog posts on the site, right? So it might not be a pretty thing that you're, reassess you're, you're refreshing, but it could be still helpful for the business. So long, short answer, yes, you need to reassess your website budget, uh, make sure. And again, uh, just a warning, if you're working with an agency, make sure they're giving you reports or they're at least telling you what they're doing for the site. Have they applied fixes? Mm -hmm. How's your, if they're saying that they're going to create content for you, how is their content performing? You don't want to blog just for the sake of having a blog. You want it to mm -hmm. actually be something useful. So if you're working with an agency and that's where you're spending your dollars, I would say, ask them, what they're doing i just be say hey i just can i get some transparency as to what you guys are working on with my website can i get some reporting on how the traffic is doing or how the social media is going because that's also part of that website budget that marketing budget and you don't want those i understand i work hard for my money we all do right we don't want that to go to waste all right. You know, it's fun. It's you, you just uh, mentioned some, uh, you know, some analytics that are there that you didn't realize. Maybe it's the blog page. It's really driving some 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 traffic. Um, I think those are always those. I love those aha moments. They, I'll, I'll do that for some analytics for podcasters um, taking a look at where they listen and what city mm -hmm. they're from, what from what state. And, you know, most people, when you're you're creating your podcast, you you kind of feel like, OK, I'm in you know, Lincoln, Nebraska, that's probably where my listeners are. That's, you know, that's my home base or Columbus, Ohio, where we are. And you start to look at the analytics and your listeners are not in Columbus, Ohio or Lincoln, Nebraska. You're actually touching San Francisco mm -hmm. or, you know, Houston, Texas or something like that. And it's just seeing the client's eyes go, really? That's mm -hmm. interesting. But they start to put the dots together that they kind of figure out why. Yeah. But they never thought it was going to happen. So I think, it, you know, it, and then it leads toward, okay, is there a group of people down or in those cities that you need to go see or mm -hmm. do something specific with? Same with the website that it's like, keep looking maybe quarterly or every other month or something like that. I, I don't like people that live and, and die. You know, you have to in your world, but you know, it's that analytics are not, not to me are not a daily thing It's like look at them every couple of weeks you're fine you know unless there's something very specific you want to see that to, it, it, that was a very special episode or a very special blog that you want to see did it how's it tracking how's it tracking okay fine mm -hmm. but don't live there <laughs> you're, look, you're looking and you know you're spending the wrong energies and you're yeah. spending energies in the wrong place let's yeah, put it I, that way yeah. i uh i'm if you're if you're not watching the video if you're just listening i'm smiling ear to ear because Brett, I I like I really love Chicago, and we visit there at least once a year. Mm -hmm. And I have two podcasts that are just about Chicago news and what's happening in Chicago. I'm in Columbus, Ohio. I'm not in Chicago. They, I might be messing with their analytics because <laughs> they're like, "What is this person in Columbus listening to us?" Right? Yeah, consistently too. It's an everyday podcast, right? Yeah. Uh, and I consistently listen to <laughs> what's happening in the city of Chicago. 
you should be creating a podcast, what's happening in Columbus and share the content with them. Right. <laughs> it's like, I can't be the only one in Columbus that loves Chicago too. So let's, let's, <laughs> let's, let's share yeah. <laughs> that sort yeah. of thing. So no, exactly. Exactly. It's just, I, I just love that surprise analytic stuff. I just do, you know, that you stuff that you weren't planning on happening specifically. It's just kind of a gift given to you. It's like, wow, this is cool. So um, any final thoughts or recommendations for uh, the listener? Yeah, I would just encourage business owners to view their website as an investment rather than an expense. A well-designed and maintained website can really be a powerful tool for driving the business growth and success. And then really by budgeting effectively and making these really cool strategic investments, you can ensure that the website will continue to support your business goals for years to come, whether that is you're spending a hundred bucks a year on your website to a hundred thousand, you're doing it strategically, you know where your money is going, where your energy is going, whether you have an agency or you're DIYing it. I want you to be proud of what you have and to know that, hey, if I'm spending this time or money, it's for a purpose and it's I'm tracking it and it's to grow my business. Yeah, this may be the the, the scariest part of, of a website design. I mean, it, it, it's the, um, the modern brick and mortar. We don't know what to do. We don't know what to do. So, you know, I think you've brought up some fantastic points about, you know, how to at least approach this uh, a bit more logically. But if they wanted to spend some time with you to really knock it out of the park, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, yeah, you can always find me on LinkedIn. Feel free to message me with any of your website questions. Um, Yasmin Robles on LinkedIn. Uh, if you, you can follow us on Instagram or Facebook, uh, where if you want to find us and talk to us or book a call, roblesdesigns.com, that's R-O-B-L-E-S, designs.com, or you can download the free checklist at roblesdesigns slash checklist. Yeah, and, and uh, the Circle 270 Media Podcast Consultants, we've always talked about you know, having a domain with your podcast, always, somewhere, have it, because that is the best way to, you know, for a, a call to action for your listeners. So, you know, if um, there is any discussion need to be had around your podcast with a domain name and, and, you know, wanting to budget for your podcast, uh, we'll bring Yasmin in, get to my calendar, mypodcastguy.com, and um, let's get you going because, you um, Really, it's 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 more important than you realize. It, it's just something you've got to address, but at the same time, be smart about it, build a budget around it, and and know that uh, we work with all levels of podcasters and know that, yes, dollars and cents make a big difference, but there is a way to do it. So um, head over to mypodcastguy.com and, and let's book a session. Thanks, Yasmin. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much, Brett. <laughs>